Arthur Neville Chamberlain was born in 1869 into a rather impressive family. You might assume that raising a prime minister would be a source of great pride for a family, but not so for the Chamberlains, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Young Neville was a successful businessman who entered politics pretty late in life, becoming Lord Mayor of Birmingham in 1915 at the age of 46. By 1918, he was elected a member of parliament. He served as Chancellor of the Exchequer and Minister of Health, and in 1937 became Prime Minister. Meanwhile, Herr Hitler was stirring up a lot of trouble on the continent, and Chamberlain, like many who lived through World War I, hoped to never see another world war and believed appeasement would achieve that. To that end, Chamberlain reached the Munich Agreement, in which Britain and France would allow Hitler to seize a small part of Czechoslovakia in return for what the Prime Minister believed would assure peace in our time. However, Hitler was not to be trusted. Eventually, he took the rest of Czechoslovakia and followed that by invading Poland. Chamberlain was left with no other choice but to declare war. In May 1940, after the disastrous Norwegian campaign, Chamberlain resigned and Winston Churchill became prime minister. Chamberlain continued on in Churchill's cabinet, but was soon diagnosed with terminal bowel cancer. The constant pain and the bombing of London took its toll and he resigned from government. A few weeks later, on November 9, 1940, he passed on. Churchill eulogized him, saying that he worked to save, save the world from the, from the awful, awful devastating, devastating struggle, struggle in which we are now engaged. This alone will stand him in good stead as far as what is called the verdict of history is concerned. Unfortunately, popular opinion was that Chamberlain was culpable for serious diplomatic and military misjudgments that had nearly caused Britain's defeat. Even today, Chamberlain is remembered in British history for dummies as one of the 10 worst UK prime ministers of all time, all thanks to his well-intentioned but poorly realized avoidance of war. Oh, and the true pride and joy in the Chamberlain household would probably be his brother Austin who actually did win the Nobel Peace Prize in 1925 for, ironically, helping to prevent war between France and Germany. And that's History 101.